Hello, this is Greg Dallas from Green Greg's coming to you on the 16th of August 21. Time on deck is 224100 hours Central Daylight Time. Now, my friends, we're in a perilous situation more than you might think because the fall of Afghanistan, the fall of Kabul is worse than you think. Yeah, it's a lot worse. There's stuff that you're not hearing. I've got sources that are telling me things that are very concerning about this whole incident. Namely, uh, one of the reasons that Afghanistan fell so fast, according to one of my sources, is that we would we withdrew almost in the stealth of the night. We didn't real a lot of our forces, we didn't inform or fully inform or properly inform parts or all of the Afghan military that uh, a lot of assets were going to be unsecured. And apparently, somehow the Taliban knew all about it. And the Taliban went in and seized vast quantities of United States armaments, high tech, state of the art things like M1 Abrams main battle tanks, like uh, <laughs> our Apache helicopters, like systems that give the friend or foe information so we know they're, they're ours and not the enemies in combat. Oh, this is stuff you do not want to fall into enemy hands. And apparently they got lots of it and they got it in big quantities. And this is going to have major ramifications, my friends. We're going to get all into that. Uh, we're not just, we're talking technology going to China, our top technology that could, you know, we spent trillions of dollars developing. We're talking about weapon systems that we may face in combat because we have apparently just left Afghanistan militarily stronger than when we first went in there in the first place. This is a fiasco. This is a capital number one catastrophic fiasco. Now listen, I was in favor and still am of us getting out of Afghanistan. There's a way to withdraw. There's ways not to. We, would, we should have blown all that crap up if we couldn't ensure absolutely that it was 100% secure. So we weren't communicating and working properly with the Afghans uh, that, that we hoped would be in control, or at least we allegedly hoped would be in control. Uh, there's a whole lot missing here, guys. So we're going to get all in this. I'll bring this to you as part of our eyes wide open and head on the swivel knees because, my friends, if there ever been a time that you got to have your eyes wide open and head on the swivel, it is right now because guess what? This is strange. It's happened just before the 20th anniversary of when? 9 11. Wow. Wow. And what does this portend for our future? Well, it ain't pretty. It ain't pretty, guys. Yes, prep. Take your preps serious. There are so many things coming at us right now with supply chain issues, with discussions of us being shut down, locked down, kicked around, whatever. There's so many discussions about, you know, these kind of things out there and discussion space. Now, what's going to come or not come? You know, my crystal ball is mostly a light on them. <laughs> Let me tell you what. You don't need that. All you got to think to do is think, consider what may be coming as my friends. You know, do your research. And I've been doing a lot of research and right now it's not looking pretty. This is this has really put an ugly wrinkle in the things that we may have to face. So so bear in mind, I bring you a lot of videos about this. Eyes wide up and head on the soil. So you can be prepared because this proposition is of this channel if you survive, thrive, and stay out of the high. And this is why you need to subscribe to my channel and bang the up notification bell so you can get videos about these kind of things so you know what to be aware of. Also, I bring you other stories. A lot of times I talk about what to do to prevent this stuff. But this cat's out of the bag. This is going to be hard to deal with. Hard to deal with. Other than you getting ready, you preparing. Now, I do the videos because I tell the preppers, you really need to grow your own food. Those bang bangs ain't going to feed you for long when all the, everything bigger than an ant is going to be dead in a few weeks. Uh, you're going to have to learn how to, to wild forage. I do videos on that. I got plenty of videos on, on uh, going out in the weeds, eating weeds in the trees. That's free. I got videos about going to big box stores, a couple of videos on that, about what I did, what I bought, why, and going through the rationale of what I got, why I got it. So I've, I've done that kind of video. But guys, you know, uh, the big box store store is heavy and bulky. That's not too easy to carry. You know, I do a lot of videos on gardening because I think you really need to garden. But, you know, uh, 
you got that's a skill you got to learn it takes a while and then you got to worry about natural disasters and deer and zombie apocalypse invasions eating your greens you got to worry about a lot of things like that so my friends you've got to uh, also consider uh you got to consider how you're going to keep your family fed so bear in mind i have a phone call excuse me for that i got the phone open because i got to read an article from it because i can't put enough articles on my computer anymore so i'm kind of wide open I'm sure here that silenced out but i'm in a hurry here all right so my friends listen the uh thing we've got to consider is what are you going to do when the crops crash things like that hey i got a special at prepwithgreg.com go to prepwithgreg.com and then get three months of pie food Three hundred dollars off for a one month supply, seventy five. Uh, well, it's twenty five percent off, and you can't beat it because you actually get two thousand calories a day. A lot of your uh, food sites are telling you get so many years worth of supplies. They're only giving you eighty eight hundred calories a day, which is far, far, far too short of what you need to live on. And trust me with that. And you can take that from John Hollerman, who I just uh, did an interview with a few weeks ago. Two thousand calories a day, breakfast, lunch, and dinner. At that price, if you get it, you'll be a winner because this is lightweight, easy to store. These nice buckets uh, are easy to carry, store, transport, and the pouch is inside. You can throw in your backpack if you had a bug out and you'll be ready to go. Go to printwithgreg.com. There's many options if you get, uh, when you get in there. Uh, if you click on the uh, My Patriot Supply logo uh, part of that, printwithgreg.com, they'll take you on in. You can find gluten free and all other kind of options and all kind of prepping supplies. Right now is a good time to go there. All right, so let's get on with this. Uh, this is really sad what's happened uh, in Afghanistan because uh, the people there are panicking. They're running in droves to the airports. It looks like the fall of Saigon. It really does, I mean, it may be worse because uh, we've actually got the helicopter scenes that look just alike, almost just roofs to just a little bit different, a little bit different helicopter. The holy smoke guys, and but the scenes at the airport in Kabul are, are heartbreaking because there were seven people killed there just, um, trying to press through the crowds. Uh, there, there was uh, there was people who were running, chasing airplanes, trying to grab on to them as they're going, taxiing out to take off. And, and, and there's at least one photograph of somebody falling from the wheel of an airplane, a, a C-17, a U.S. Air Force C-17, it's way up in the sky, and there's a picture of a guy falling. I'm not going to share that picture with you because that's kind of, that's, that's too much. It's just too much, guys. Um, uh, but, you know, so the Afghans are in, in panic. They're in route. So here's what I've heard. What I have heard is this. My source tells me. I have to verify these things, guys. So I have a good source, a really good source. And my source tells me this. He says that Taliban got a lot of our high-tech weapon systems, including friend of foe systems, which including our uh, M1 Abrams tank, including uh, Apache attack helicopters, and the word is that the stuff's going to China, at least a lot of it. And they're going to pick through it for our technology. We spent a trillion dollars, trillions of dollars developing technology to stay ahead of our enemies. If they just give it to them, then we don't have squat. Especially if they got a friend and foe technology and if they can figure out how to decode it and, you know, uh, and how we use it, whatever encryption we use on that. Yikes. Um, that would be catastrophic in combat. Catastrophic. Uh, it's just like, you know, we beat the Chinese by, by uh, tapping their cables and, and breaking their code. That's how we beat that's, that, that little, that helped a lot. Plus we had, of course, we had uh, used our Navajo for our language, which I totally threw them. But guys, this, this is, uh, look at this. Uh, it's not just that. The word also went a little bit further according to my source. He says, not only is this stuff going to China, China's going to send it to South America. South America, a lot of this equipment, a lot of this equipment may be coming back at us with many different avenues, not just in Afghanistan. How much of the Taliban will let go to do that? I don't know. But the Taliban and the, 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 the uh, uh, Chinese Communist Party seem to be a little bit thick at the moment. At the moment, that may be a, a short lived marriage for many and sundry reasons. But right now, the uh, uh, PLA, People's Liberation Army, the, the CCP, they seem to be kind of thick with the Taliban. Okay, all that said, here's what else you got to know. Not only do they seize stuff there, but a lot of the Afghan military escaped 
up to Uzbekistan. And in Uzbekistan, they were carrying U.S. military equipment too, as their means of getting away. In fact, hundreds of Afghan soldiers fled to Uzbekistan uh, with 22 military planes and 24 helicopters. I thought helicopters were military planes too. <laughs> I suppose I mean Air Force planes. Are they just cargo planes, passenger planes, Cessnas? It says military planes. It wouldn't be a Cessna. Do these include fighter jets? The word is that one of the fighter jet got shot down on the way to Uzbekistan. That's one of the reports I saw on the news services. So it sounds like, yeah, there's there were some fighter jets now. What kind of technology is going to Uzbekistan? I said, what you need to know about Uzbekistan is, you know, when the, you know they were part of the Soviet Empire. When the Soviet Union broke apart, they became an independent nation. Well, they turned around and joined the Commonwealth of Independent States, which was being put together by Russia for a bit. But then they had some little differences with Russia, so they broke away from it. And they allied with the United States for a little bit. They were on our side. They were letting us base people there and supporting us in our war on terrorism. But what happens? We still support these color revolutions. And Uzbekistan looked like they were in the crosshairs of it. And they said, eh, eh. they kicked us out. And then they joined. <laughs> Who did they join? They joined the uh, Shanghai Corporate Cooperation Organization. Shanghai Corporation Cooperation Organization. And who's in charge of that? Ah, the Chinese Communist Party. So are they getting this equipment that's going up into Uzbekistan? Or are they at least getting it? We don't want them even seeing it. What's the chances? Oh, yeah, they spy on us all over the place here. What's the chances that they're not going to get the, the, the crack that stuff open when it gets to Uzbekistan? They'll pay premium dollar to do that. Trust me, my friends. Trust me. Oh, yeah, it was like a 500 and what was it? 585 Afghan soldiers have already fleed into, as of the report I just saw, into Uzbekistan by foot. I'm sure there's many more to follow. I'm sure there's many, many more to follow. So that's what we're talking about, guys. Uh, and then you got to think about the, the human the financial and human uh, dimensions of this. Most articles just talk about the financial things I've seen. I had to actually go look up the the human numbers on this and so and separate to separate you know what's not out in the media right now uh so we all know the war was 20 year trillion dollar war but if you look at it in terms of uh americans lost and american troops we lost 2448 over there okay nothing like but uh but u.s contract combat contractors, that is. We lost 3,846 of them. You see, they're kind of off the books, so that, that number don't you know, appear to us so readily as they were contractors. You know, like Blackwater used to be, some of those outfits like that, and they changed their name on who they are today. But think about that. So the total American, American combatants lost, 6,294. Okay, it sounds a little different than 2,448, don't it? So there's some mamas and papas and, and sons and daughters and you know brothers and sisters and wonder where they're living with, what they sacrifice for. This one is why oh why. NATO, our allies, lost 1,144. Afghan uh, military, police, all that stuff. Somewhere I believe it's 47,248. That's our two numbers here. Kind of don't agree with each other. Tal Taliban lost 51,191. So I don't know if they lost the most. So you'd think that they have lost everything. Check them a flash in their back. You know, sometimes head counts. Head counts aren't good for counting victory, okay? <laughs> if head counts counted victory, the South would have won the war of Northern Depression. <laughs> Just saying. Handle it. As you can see, that was not the case. So don't count head counts. Yeah, I remember uh, Vietnam War. Every day it was a head count. You know, you, you'd think we were winning. You know, every day they gave a head count. So many more Vietnamese, North Vietnamese were always uh, expired as opposed to ours. And that was true. How did that war turn out? Okay, so don't know about head counts. Journalists, oh yeah, aid workers, 444 aid workers and 72 journalists were lost in this 20 year conflict, apparently. So these are things to consider. You know, but the biggest the biggest tragedies are what's it mean for our future? 
You know, th this could have been better organized. It could have been better coordinated. It could have been better handled than just suddenly letting all this stuff fall in the hands. Uh, people who are somewhat then absolutely friendly to us. And I said, Greg, you know, hey, they got their own country back. Maybe they'll leave us alone. Well, I want you to hope. But here's the problem. We went in over there and we would say there's a, there is a terrorist going here or there. And we'd send a drone aircraft, predator drone or something in to get that person. Get that person. And what would we do? We'd hit a wedding party. We would hit a funeral. It seemed like a house party. We'd attack a house. Person goes to the house, attack the house, blow up the house, everybody in it. We got in it, dozens of people, especially the funerals, the wedding parties. And we hit wedding, we seem to really like hit wedding parties. What happens? We take yeah, the mama, the papa, grandpa, grandma, aunts, uncles, kids. That's not important. That is no way to wage a WAR, not in my opinion. But what happens is you, every time you take out all those other people, you've made a ton more enemies. Maybe they weren't aligned with the Taliban or Al Qaeda. Maybe they weren't. They might have been peace loving folks. You know, you just made them mad. You made the hatred see them. And this word gets out all over. This word gets out. And so you get a lot of people who are somewhat less than totally pleased with you. You've been stomping them on, you know, you, you humiliated them, you defeated them in the first place, you held them down for 20 years, you did this stuff continuously. So most people are, are, are somewhat less than our absolute best fan club members. So to think that they wouldn't be trying for retribution and doing so fast be a little optimistic. Also consider that we just left them with a treasure trove of armaments that puts them uh, far ahead of where we were when we got started over there. So, you know, you, you think that, that, that we should at least leave them no better off than what they were when we started. But no, it doesn't appear that way. Look how fast the Taliban took over. Wow. Because why? Well, they had armaments. <laughs> they had armaments. Not the army. The Taliban got them. And the army was in route. They were fleeing. Just like the people, the citizens, the government people, all to the airports. These people, now listen, they're so scared. They're grabbing on the airplanes. These are people that would fight if they could. But they are terrified. They're terrified for what's to come in their country. You got to feel for them. When somebody's that terrified, when they're that scared, your heart, if your heart don't go out to them, you don't have a heart. I'm just saying, guys, this is horrible for them. And it doesn't look good for us either, that whether we're dealing with China down the road or terrorists in the future. Who knows, this stuff might come back. You know, our border is so wide open, you could drive a division to it and we wouldn't even notice, it seems like. Division of M1 tanks. Uh, yeah, okay, yeah, it'd be hard to get them, sneak them all the way up. Unless they have some oil cost. Hey, China's got big airstrips in there. Uh, land owns big sections of land. There's a lot of our military bases now. Hmm, putting in airstrips on some of this. Long airstrips. We're talking jet capable. Yeah. Where are we at today, guys? This is awful. This is catastrophic, guys. So let me share some articles. I hope my computer don't crash on me. I tried this earlier. Let's see what my memory's doing. I hope going to screen share don't crash everything. I, I, this is my second attempt at this, guys. So I'm running so late tonight here. I haven't had a meeting right before this, but this is my second attempt. I'm gonna try to do a screen share. Last time I did this, I crashed. But I've only got I've only got three web pages open. <laughs> Not near what I like to show you, but I opened up, I put some of them in this uh, PowerPoint file. Let's see if I can go to PowerPoint with everything crashing. Oh wow, we made it. Yay! <laughs> Guys. This is Saigon. That's just copies of smart. This is Saigon. This is Kabul. This is 19, I believe, 76. This is then. This is now. 
Oh, there's also a picture of a black helicopter going there that looks a lot more like this Huey. But uh, that was the, probably one of the websites I shut down most likely. I had a lot of different pictures. I want to show you a little bit here, guys. Hanoi. Hanoi. Oh, excuse me. Saigon. That's a Saigon. And there's the bowl. Wow. I mean, you know, when I first saw this picture, I, th I thought I was looking at one of the, the Saigon pictures. Here's the people chasing an Air Force aircraft out on the tarmac. They're all trying to get on board this. They're all hoping to get on it. These people are desperate. They're scared to death because that's what they're afraid they're going to meet. Look at them here, standing on top of an airline, coming out the windows and everywhere else, the doors. How's this airline even going to take off? You can't take off people standing on top of it. This is how desperate these people are, guys. They're desperate. They're scared to death. That's it. Come on, guys. These people are scared to death. I'm going to stop this year. I thought I had some more pictures now. I don't think I saved it the way I did earlier. I'm going to kill this from memory just so it don't get up on my memory here, guys. I gotta save as much memory as I can. I'm gonna go into another share. We're gonna go into a, make sure my RAM settles down. <laughs> no, I have to constantly watch my memory on my little task manager on this computer. I need a new computer. I'm running like Windows 7 or 8 on here and I got a, uh, this computer just don't have enough RAM. It's got all the disk space. And I got computers I can open 40 dozen tabs in. I don't know if my books are four or five, six at best on this computer. But they have no disk drive. Can't put videos on them. <laughs> All right, so let's go over here. Hang on, guys. I'll do another share. I got to make sure I got it. I got two articles. So all I trusted that for the previous crash test. I'm up for two articles. I'm not sure. I wanted to share a whole bunch of them, but that's all we're going to do right now. Share screen. <clears throat> so there's many other ramifications of what's going on in. Afghanistan. Any me If you zoom, I'll let me go through and maximize this window. There we go. Every time I reach for the controls on Google, Zoom's screen comes down. <laughs> All right, guys, look at this. China warns Taiwan it should be trembling as the U.S. won't protect you from invasion leading to World War III fears. Oh, China, oh, Taiwan, look what the U.S. did over here. You expect them to protect you? Oh, no, they're not going to protect you. So you need to be trembling in your boots. You need to be scared because, you know, the United States isn't going to protect you now if they just tucked their tail and ran out of Afghanistan. What makes you think they're going to protect you? The chaotic scenes erupting across Afghanistan amid the Taliban takeover after President Joe Biden decided to withdraw troops back 20 years. Beijing has warned Taiwan you can't rely on America in a crisis. Wow. So based on that, they're trying to get them to capitulate, surrender. I don't think Taiwan's going to do that. But they're, they're definitely waging a psychological campaign against Taiwan. Let's see, uh, Lee Haydong, a professor of the Institute of International Relations of the China Foreign Affairs University, said he believes the U.S. is set to cast aside Taiwan should Taipei push for independence. Well, it was also the case that uh, China may go for them without them doing it, because China says they're going to, to well, they're an independent country already. It's just a you know, declaration out of the China can stand. But China apparently wants to go and take them anyway, so who knows? Uh, so however the ideological uh, German influence, some observers may see the situation in the aisle as being different from that in Afghanistan, but there's one thing in, com in common, America's empty promise. So now then we'll use this against all of our allies, telling our allies that America is not real. America will not stand up. America will not help you. Why are you allied to the United States? Ally with us, bend over and capitulate to our country because we are the one that's resolute. That's what we're gonna be telling people. So,
So this is what we're looking at, guys. I'm not gonna read this entire article. I just wanted to get the, the feel of that. Here's more of the scenes. There's the airport there. People running, chasing the planes down the runway. Yeah. So it's either just before or after this picture was made, there's a picture of a body falling. It might be in this photograph, you just can't see it. So guys, that's a sad thing. It was way up in the air. So I'm gonna so get a little bit of this video on this one. It's the same thing. Just get an idea of what it looks like these people chasing this airplane, guys. Look at this. They really are. They're chasing the airplane. How in the world can you even take off this kind of thing going around? How can you operate an airport? Well, and this is the military side, apparently, because this is a military front. Look at people traveling on outside. Look at these people jumping on the airplane, reaching for vents and everything, trying to find some way to hold on. You can't hold on to an airplane in flight. That's crazy. No way. So I'm going to end that. Stop the share. Guys, this is this is just uh, heartbreaking. Heartbreaking. What's going on today? Uh, what do we, so let's just kind of wreck it up. What's happened as a result of this? One, a lot of people in Afghanistan, they're the biggest losers. They're scared to death. They're scared from their lives. They're running the thing every way they can. That's the, the, the Taliban just took over. Took the presidential palace yesterday. The president has fled the country. The UN talking about setting up a new government in Afghanistan. The Taliban is going to set up the government. You mean ain't going to do Jack Diddle on this? If they do, it ain't going to matter. So there you are. We've apparently cut a deal with the Taliban by telling them we sent more troops in just to secure the airport so we can get our guys out. Not the equipment, we lost the equipment. Now, supposedly bombed a little bit of it, but a whole lot of it fell into Afghan hands. Afghan, not Afghan hands, but Taliban hands. Now, the Afghan military, if they could have held apart, might have been a different matter. But what they had, a lot of that went to Uzbekistan. What's his best Uzbekistan tied in with? China. Is the Taliban tied in with China? At the very least, you're going to see a huge transfer of military technology to China. You're going to see a huge uh, increase in the military strength of the Taliban compared to what they had before. So, and you can expect there will be a base for uh, groups like uh, Al Qaeda. What did Al Qaeda have against us in the first place? Well, we had troops in Saudi Arabia, which was their whole. Area. And that was considered a great heresy, and, and supposedly they should attack us for that. Now, some people debate about 9 11, what really happened. You know, the, the, the uh, Taliban definitely was behind, or the, the Al Qaeda was definitely behind the bombings in uh, the embassies in Africa, like in Kenya, I believe it was Tanzania, Tanzan Tanzania, they call it. You know, we call it Tanzania, but they call it Tanzania over there. Um, I had a, a sister in law. We were really worried about because she lived in Nairobi and walked in front of the Kenyan uh, American embassy in Kenya to work every day. And a lot of people on that sidewalk uh, ceased to exist on that day. And we were really worried because we got a hold of her on the phone. So, yeah, that's what we're talking about, guys. That is what we're talking about. So, increased profit. Uh, we have a uh, loss of technology, which may make a war with China much more difficult. Much more difficult. And we have also uh, now a new prospect for terrorism from Afghanistan. Maybe more than we experienced in the past. As a matter, we got more equipment. Some of that equipment may even go out elsewhere. As one of my sources has alleged. Let's see how that pans out. Let's hope we don't see how it pans out. Let's hope it just don't happen. Guys, you know, it'll be a good time to pray. Right now would be a really good time for some prayers. It'd be a good time to write your congressman to say, hey, this is, mm -hmm. I don't want to see this happen anymore. But, you know, this came out of the administration. This came out of the administration, guys. Anyway.
And General Miley, yeah, you need to resign. <laughs> so, whew. all right, guys. You better hug the ones you love. Let them know you love them. Tell them that every day because you know you don't want to happen. Your day might be an auto accident or something like that. You know, I'm lucky I survived the 19th of April. I had an auto accident here and there, but I just like just survived it. And it just happens in a snap of a finger. Snap of a finger. Everything's hunky dory one second, and next foot second, everything is upside down. So you just never know day to day what to expect. But always tell the people you love, you love them. Give them a hug. Especially these days and ages, people need that contact. They're social animals. And a lot of what's come up with all these bug going around, social isolation, is psychologically damaging people. So we need that in every way we can. Reach out to our friends, family, and neighbors, even virtually if you got no other way, but tell them you love them. Tell them you love them. And get ready, folks. Prep. Get ready. Just get ready for whatever may come. All I know is we've got all kinds of makings for you know what storms. All kinds of making. Yeah, I, I, I just got a truckload of you know what. A few days ago, but I can guarantee you that's a whole lot better than you know what it may be coming at, guys. All right. God bless everybody. That's all I can say. And I hope everybody just, just really pays attention. But get ready, prep, do whatever you can to get ready right now. Now is the time to do it before the supply chain's totally shut down. Yeah, we got supply chain challenges right now. We got price challenges. These prices on this food I just mentioned. Expect to go up. Wheat prices are going up. Expect wheat prices to sh skyrocket. I was going to do a video on this week, last week, and just give a chance. Just expect wheat prices to skyrocket. So, you know, this is a good investment, guys. It's a good investment. Anyway, so I don't know you watched this far. Just say, Greg, I get the point. I'll get ready as best I can. I'll right, get ready. You know, I know everybody don't have a ton of money, especially these days and times, but. You know, sometimes just a little bit of time and it adds up over a time period. If you can just get a month supply of a month, in 12 months, you'd have a year if you have that long. But hey, my videos on how to eat from the weeds and trees, they're free to watch, and that food's free. It's just, you might not have quite the calories and protein you need. But, you know, maybe you'll find a way to get there. But I'm just going to say take care and thank you for watching. <laughs>